Hello friends. This week's project is a Victorian double skirt. I found this pattern on Etsy um, and they also included a, a card. So I'm just going to get a close-up of that. They've got a website as well. And this particular pattern calls for six and a half yards of fabric as well as two yards of a fabric lining and the skirt length is 42 inches the um it comes with the the um, patterns as well as some instructions the instructions are really kind of terse so i would i would guess that this um is meant for um, a seasoned sewer, somebody who doesn't need a whole lot of pictures or explanations. Um, but it definitely does include all the instructions. And the, the pattern itself seems quite basic. Um, so I'm really looking forward to diving in. And for my material, I have chosen a 100% polyester. Um, it's gray and it feels a little bit a little bit coarse and I think it's going to be a heavy material um, and I'm really looking forward to that because um, where I live the winters are cold so I think it'll be a great material to um, kind of layer up in the in the winter months and I am going to get started cutting out the patterns and I will see you guys back when I'm ready to start sewing. question that you'll have is right after you cut out your pattern is whether to do some stitching along the edges or if you can delay a little bit and do like a felling stitch once once you've already stitched up the seams. Um, this particular material is a hundred percent polyester and right after I brought it home from the fabric store I noticed there was a lot of fraying. This is about a fourth of an inch of fraying. Um, right after you bring home your fabric from the fabric store, this is a really good time really to think about your fabric, to think about whether it's gonna fray. Um, the fraying can mean that you have less of a, a seam allowance to work with, so it's something really to, to consider. So what I'm gonna be doing is an overlock stitch. I have just cut out this fabric um, that is going to be the, the lining for, for a skirt that I'm working on. And this is an overlock stitch. Um, it's a little bit time consuming, but if the, if the fraying is going to make it more difficult for you to work with the fabric and um, if it's going to cut into your seam allowance, I think it's really, really worth your time. And as you work more and more with fabric, you'll get a pretty good idea about what fabric needs to have some kind of stitching on the edges and what kind of fabric you can 
wait a little bit and um, do your do your seam stitching and maybe do a felling stitches stitches after after the fact but if you're all concerned uh, about the fraying this is a really really good stitch um, it's kind of a, a stitch in time is how I like to think about it it'll just make your project so much easier if you if you take the time to do this overlock stitch I have just finished the overlock stitch on all the edges of the um, fabric that will be used for the skirt lining and now I've drawn um, a half inch um, seam um, with some tailor's chalk and for the stitching I'm going to be using a double stitch And I will be using this double stitch um, along all of the seams um, for the for the skirt lining. For the sides of the of the skirt, um, what I did is I trimmed one one side so it's really close to the seam there, and this other side I left I left just as long. And what I'm doing is turning it down. I did try to iron it to turn it down, but I think the fabric is just way, way too stiff for the ironing really to hold. Um, just because it has to fold over a, a couple of layers of fabric. So what I'm doing is pinning it down. And I've already done a little little bit of pinning now what I'm going to do is what's called a felling stitch and when you're doing the felling stitch you just want to grab a thread or two on the on the side of the fabric that's going to be visible and then you're going to push your needle through on the other side if I can get the the camera to cooperate with with me and my hands and I'm just gonna remove that pin and always the first stitch is is the hardest for me but we're gonna try and straighten this guy out And that is not perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. And this material I actually have a, a pattern called for about I think it was six yards of fabric if I, I'm remembering correctly so I've got quite a bit of felling to do before I move on to my next next step and the stitches get get easier as as you do them if you kind of get into a rhythm it gets a lot gets a lot easier once once you get going for the hem on the lower skirt um, it says that 
it should um, be turned over one inch and then one inch again. And then for the hem on the upper skirt, it says that it should be um, turned over one half and then one inch again. I'm going to round up these figures um, because usually skirts, um, by and large, and pants, they end up being way too long for me. So what I'm going to do um, on the upper portion of the lower skirt, I'm going to actually um, fold under one and a half and then one and a half again. Um, I'll leave the bottom portion um, unhemmed until I actually am ready to try it on and after everything is put together. And for the upper skirt, for, for both hems, um, I will be turning over one inch and then one inch again. And for both of, of these hems, um, what I'm going to be doing is a felling stitch. step is to gather or pleat the top edge of the lower skirt to fit the bottom edge of the skirt lining and then sew with right sides together. So this is what I'm doing now. I've already gathered the lower skirt um, to the point where it can be it can be sewn to the lining and what I'm going to do next is um, a whip stitch. step is to attach the upper upper skirt over skirt lining along top edge matching all seams and so I have uh, attached um, the upper skirt to the skirt lining and now I'm doing a whip stitch of the skirt um, what I did is I just turned it down about an inch and then I gathered it um, gathered it to the extent that it would be able to um, fit the the waistband um, and I did a, a whip stitch along the along the bottom and now what I'm doing is working on the waistband um, the waistband measures about one inch and I did a whip stitch on the bottom and now I'm going to do another whip stitch 
to attach it to the top of the skirt. For the bottom of the skirt, um, I'm doing a felling stitch on the on the bottom here. And what I noticed was um, that the skirt was actually nine inches too long for me. Um, I believe this is the case because this particular pattern is designed to be able to um, fit over a hoop. Um, so I can understand why it needs that little bit of fabric. Um, but I think, um, if I am able in the mood to do this again, um, I think I will actually trim off about five inches from the bottom, um, just so I don't end up with so, so much wasted material. Um, instead of just trimming off the bottom, um, I decided just to do a, a really big hem. And you can see it's quite, it's quite, um, it's quite large. <laughs> but I thought it would be easier just to um, fold the fabric over a couple of times and um, just make the hem really large. Mm -hmm. 